الفكر يا إنسان لو أطلقته متأملا في قدرة By the time children are 20 months old, they can use a fork, throw a ball, feed a cat and mimic talking on the phone, or drop your phone in the sink and laugh. The question is, how much do they actually understand about the world around them and their place in it? According to a new study in France, babies know a lot more than you would imagine. Researchers tested 20 months old babies and found that these infants are already capable of practicing a sophisticated form of thinking called metacognition. According to Dr. Sid Quader, metacognition is best described as a gut feeling. The question is, how do infants actually know? How much do they know? And how this metacognition is linked to what is called moral conscience, even without acquiring any knowledge at such young age? The short answer to this is our primordial nature. In this episode, we are discussing our primordial nature and the various aspects of the basic knowledge and faculties that we are equipped with at birth. The question is that what is primordial nature? You've been using cell phone quite a bit, right? So what is default factory settings? From the settings that the phone comes with from the factory. Yeah, so the f settings with which the phone comes from the factory. And then when something goes wrong with the phone, what do you do? Factory reset it. And then? It becomes normal. The lesson is that if you, when you mess up the factory settings, then the item won't function as it is intended, right? So same is the case with human beings. We too have, have default settings, right? And when we go against those primordial settings, those default settings, uh, when you go against the primordial nature, then we mess up our, our action, our behaviors, and then we, we face severe consequences as well. In, in this life and in the hereafter. So let's put the primordial nature in the middle uh, and that's like the settings that we all are born with. So just like the phone, right? So what different types of, of settings do you have in your phone? Mm, Wi-Fi settings. You have Wi-Fi settings, you have uh, maybe settings for apps and emails and all those kinds of things, right? Uh, same is the case with human beings, right? So, so our default settings are also uh, broken down into different categories, right? So the first categories are, are spiritual settings, right? And those spiritual settings help us find the purpose of our life. So all those questions that come to mind, uh, who are we, why are we here, um, who's our creator, what's the purpose of our life, those questions are because of the curiosity in our nature. And then uh, modern science, those experiments in, in psychology and uh, neurology, right uh, they have proved that that we do have spiritual settings which force us uh, to to find or seek the purpose of our, of our of our existence right and our creator and that's called hyper agency detective device and based on that uh, i'll just give you a few uh, quick quotations from a book by justin barrett that's called the title of the book is Born Believers. He has concluded that children naturally develop belief because of their mental mechanism. So we have that inbuilt mental mechanism because of which our children are in a very young age. He says that three year old knows that God is immortal and that he will never die. Right. So they've done experiments with with as young children as three year old who were from the families where they were not so-called indoctrinated into believing one or another religion or a God or something. And those children, even there's another one uh, by Martha Gimenez Dasi. What she says is the children demonstrate theological notions about God. For example, when asked who would know what's inside a concealed gift without opening, the children would say that God would know, right? So this research proves that we are born with some 
uh, what is called hyper agency detective device in our nature which helps us be curious and try to seek the purpose of our life right so those are the the default spiritual setting any thought any idea anything that comes to mind related to this any question no okay all right so then the next set of settings is our moral settings right uh, in, in our primordial nature and by default again we are inclined to do good to be just to be compassionate to be kind so this becomes like the combination of our moral and spiritual settings uh, becomes our moral consciousness right so without being taught without being indoctrinated right you by your nature have to be kind and gentle not do anything that's bad right do good so it becomes a moral compass for you right and then you try to avoid bad and do good even if you are not indoctrinated right in this case they have done some research i'll give you these two examples there's a book the book title is just babies and they did some some research with as young infants as uh, one year old five months old and 21 months old they were letting those babies play with some puppets right and some puppets would be good some puppets would be bad some would be concealing or hiding or stealing the ball and some would be kind of gentle and kind and they were saying that uh, infants as five months old would prefer good puppets right and then one year old would pet and soothe another baby in distress right so that 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 element of compassion is is part of our default settings right our our, our primordial nature and then when when they were 20 months old right so so when they were five months old they were preferring the the kind or the the good puppets right but when they were 21 months old right when they could reward a good puppet they were actually uh, rewarding they preferred to reward good puppets right so that that that's that element of justice in our in our nature right so by nature uh, we are inclined to do good right to avoid bad and to be gentle to to discriminate good from evil right good from bad any question so the next uh, two sets of settings are actually uh, also interrelated and they are our intellectual default settings and then our physical settings right so with the invent of uh, MRI and PET and SPEC those those brain imaging systems right uh, what's happening is that neurologists are finding new evidence right that we do have some inborn uh, or or primordial settings right we are born we are not born with a clean slate with some of the uh, uh, philosophers thought so one very interesting thing is that babies have grasp of physics of liquids right so they they, they did some research with very young babies right uh, and if liquids which were apparently liquid won't behave like liquids so they would be surprised right or if they were solids and they didn't behave like solid uh, which they were expecting right then they would uh, they would also uh, express their their surprise and then there's new evidence uh, that uh, uh, in fact i have these some papers here uh, so ooh, ooh, ooh. so this one it says that new new evidence of innate knowledge and this is uh, called a, a blue brain project this one says that uh, that that neuroscience has proved now that they have discovered that neurons make connections independent of subject's experience and the other one here uh, this is a research study by thomas and henry it says a synaptic organizing principle for critical neuron group right what they have discovered is that the, in the brain there are some uh, what they call uh, bottom up processes and then there are some top down processes right so the bottom up processes uh, i won't go into details but they are because of our innate or inborn knowledge right and the other ones uh, the top down Uh, are because of our experience right and what we learn uh, the the knowledge that we learn similarly uh, here is the uh, uh, the research uh, which is called baby physics right uh, and which proves that babies already have 
some understanding and knowledge of the physics of liquid, right? That's another one. Uh, and then mathematics and innate knowledge of neuroscience. Uh, do you remember we had that conversation about uh, Plato and Socrates? Uh, and uh, Plato actually uh, wrote those dialogues, right? And in the, uh, there was a dialogue which was called uh, the Mano, right? And in which uh, they concluded that they did some some dialogue with a slave boy. And what did they do? What was the, what was the conclusion? That uh, everyone has some innate knowledge. Exactly. And they actually extracted some basic principles of geometry from a slave illiterate boy, right? And here is another one, the, the psychology and a neuroscience of curiosity. So remember we discussed here, uh, this is part of our primordial nature, one of the default settings, uh, spiritually, that we'll be seeking uh, the purpose of our life and, and our existence and our creator. And here, the neuro neurologists have proved that inbuilt mechanism of curiosity within our, uh, within our nature, right? Because of that, we always look for, for the purpose of our life. And then when we don't do or don't behave or don't act the way we are supposed to be acting based on these default settings, then what happens with the cell phone? The cell phone doesn't function, right? If you go against the, the default settings, same as the human nature, right? Then our uh, nature is restless. We seek happiness and we seek fun and we seek um, other things in life, right? If that's not in alignment with our primordial nature, right, our default settings, then we are never satisfied. And then intellectual settings, so they go hand in hand, right? So intellectual settings, human beings are the only species who has, how many languages are there in the world so far? 7,000 languages, right? Don't give me that smile. So there are 7,000 languages and babies young as one, two years old, they start talking and they learn the, the intricacies of those languages and, and those languages are based on just a certain number of characters. Look at the numbers, right, from zero to to nine, only 10 digits, right? Uh, and we do so many complex calculations and everything with that. And that's just because of our intellectual settings, right? Our primordial intellectual and physical settings. When they did th those experiments on, 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 on young babies, uh, they were saying that if you show infants something which has either very limited or no information to something very complex and something which they can understand a little bit, then they would pay more attention to to things with, with with information which they can absorb, right? Or they won't pay attention to things with lots of information or very little information, which also proves that they, even at that age, are maximizing their potential to learn, right? And then from the intellectual perspective, when it comes to the numbers, this is now research shows that even six month old babies, they can distinguish between uh, the displays with different quantities and different numbers, right? They've done some extensive, amazing research. So all these things prove that we are born with some default settings. Now the question is, how would we know what are default settings and how would we always be functioning or living in alignment to these default settings, right? What would make it easy for us to live by these default settings, right? So the mechanism for this is Islam. Right? And Islam, that's why we're saying Islam is not a religion. It's a way of life, right? So when it's a way of life, it makes you live by these default settings. And that's why Islam is also, there are a couple of more examples I think I have to share with you. So Noam Chomsky, you know Noam, Ch Noam Chomsky? He is a linguist, right? And he says uh, that, uh, that there are deep and restrictive principles that determine the nature of human language. Uh, and are rooted in the specific character of our human mind. So that specific character of human mind is actually our primordial nature, right? Uh, and this one belongs here. So this one is uh, from A.S. Focus. That's about maths and net knowledge and neuroscience, right? It says, indeed, the, the, the complicated neuronal circuits of the 100 billion neurons in the brain together with the astounding dynamic behavior of their synapses, provide the material basis for the existence of both the elemental innate knowledge as well as the 
predetermined predisposition to learning. It's a bit complex for you. But what it actually proves is, again, that, that not, we are not only being given these default settings the way we need to behave, our nature has to behave, but we are also provided with that physical capacity and capability uh, to support all these default settings, right? And then when we say, so I'll just go, come back to the, the point, that Islam is called uh, Deen Fitra, a way of life which fits the nature, right? Uh, so it's kind of like hand in glove, right? So hand actually fits the glove. So the way of life of Islam fits these, uh, these default settings for us. And for that, here we have something from the Quran, right? And the Quran says that set your face to the, to the deen فَأَقِمْ وَجْهِكَ فَأَقِمْ وَجْهِكَ لِلْدِّينِ Hanifa, right? So set your face. Here we go. Now the picture is complete, right? So it says, set your face to the deen, the way of life, uh, in sincerity, which is Allah's fitra. Right, which is the nature made by Allah, uh, upon which he created mankind. So this is the Quran, uh, chapter 30, verse 30. And Allah says, they set your face, like means, follow the religion, the deen, the way of life is of Islam, which is the nature made by Allah, upon which he created mankind. And this is very interesting. So on the one hand here, Allah says that set your face to the deen, which is the way of life, in sincerity, which is Allah's fitra. So the deen of Islam, it's the reference to the deen of Islam, which is the way of life of Islam, which is made, or the, the rules, the do's and don'ts of Islam, they are in a way that when you live a life based on the do's and don'ts of Islam and you practice the way Islam has been prescribed, then everything is, is in alignment to these uh, basic primordial or, or default factory settings, right? And then we are happy and we are successful and we have contentment. But if we go against it, then it doesn't help. So it says that, uh, that this is the nature upon which Allah has created mankind. It's called fitrat and nas. This is the right thing. This is the right way of life. Islam is the right way of life. But most people don't know. This is being supported by another verse here. Allah says that we'll show our signs to them in the horizons and within themselves until it becomes clear to them that this is the truth. So let me explain it to you uh, in, a, in a different way. The Quran uses the word nafs which means self, right? Self to express consciousness. Uh, the central constituent of our personality. If this, is our pers if this is our personality, then the central component, the central piece of, of uh, constituent of our personality is nafs. So the signs within, when Allah says, uh, we will show them our signs to them in the horizons and within themselves. So self, just to say, self is actually consciousness that we have uh, and then this self, the signs within this, this self, the signs of the self, uh, they're not limited to, to our physical body and the systems that we have, right? It also uh, refers to the self-consciousness, which is critical. Self-consciousness. And then that includes the, the spirit. It includes the ideas, the innate knowledge, right? Uh, so the signs within ourselves are not limited to, 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 to our physical body, right? Uh, and, and, and how it's shaped. The signs within ourselves are intrinsic and primordial things, right? Including the concepts and ideas that are not derived from experience. So a person who deciphers the meaning of, of these signs, right? Who understands these signs, he believes in, in Allah, his creator, uh, and the hereafter. So, so the bottom line is that if you don't understand these signs, if you don't understand yourself, then you don't understand 
the creator, then you can't reach the truth, right? You don't understand the purpose of your existence. And that's why Allah also says, it's uh, chapter 59, verse 19, and he says that don't be like those who forget Allah. And so he caused them to forget themselves. So what happens is that when you forget Allah, he makes you forget yourself. So it goes both ways, right? Go against your fitra, and the fitra is to seek the purpose of your existence, to seek your Lord. And if you forget that, you're just busy with your job, and making money or seeking fun in life, and you don't care about your curiosity to seek the purpose of your life, to understand the purpose of your life and, and seek your creator. And then what happens is that your creator makes you forget about yourself, right? And when you forget you about yourself, you can't understand your Lord. And when you don't understand your Lord, then you don't understand the purpose of your life. And here, uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says that every child is born upon the fitra, these default settings. And then his parents make him into a Jew or a Magian or Christian or whatever, right? So now the question is that how is this linked to your current reality and, and the, 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 the life that we live, right? Because the question might be that if, if Islam is uh, a specific way of life which facilitates and ensures that we live a life based on these, these uh, core, innate, inborn uh, characteristics, then we should be honest, we should be kind, compassionate. Why do we have all those negative elements among, amongst ourselves, right? So like for instance, in Ardwa, in the first two months here, not even two months, one and a half month, uh, th there have been how many homicides? Five. And out of those five, how many were Muslims? Um, four victims, uh, three, three victims. Three victims were Muslims, right? And one murderer, and one murderer was, was a Muslim. So now the question would be that were those Muslims following the deen of Islam? No, it's so obvious, right? Because uh, majority of, of those who got killed were uh, which demographic, which age group? Teenagers. They were young, right? They were young. And what they were seeking? Thrill. Like they were into gangs and they were into drugs and they were into all those things. Uh, bad company, right? So they were not using their moral compass, right? So if you're not using your moral, moral compass, you're not using your moral consciousness, you're acting against your default settings. You are not living the deen of Islam, right? And if you're not living the deen of Islam, of, of course, you're facing consequences one way or the other. So all of that was a quick example. But the, the whole humanity, you just pull out of, of this Ardwa example, right? And you look at the humanity and we are moving in different directions. And we have several isms and several ways of life and, and several identities and, and everyone is going in, in, in a different direction. But everyone is, is struggling for something. They are, everyone is looking for happiness. Everyone is looking for success. Everyone is looking for contentment. But who actually is contented, right? Truly contented. Only those who live a way of life which is totally aligned to the factory default settings with which we are born, right? So if you live a life like this, uh, which is aligned to your uh, primordial settings, primordial nature, then you'll truly be happy and contented. Any questions so far? Is it clear? So just tell me quickly, what is what was this all about? And give it to me in, uh, in a minute. Uh, <coughs> that everyone is born with innate knowledge, yeah, yeah. not a clean state, a slate. Good, very good. Uh, and then? So everyone is born to do good, and yeah, reward good. Yeah. Uh, so then, those default settings have four different categories, right? Uh, so we have some default settings which are moral, some are spiritual, some are physical, and some are intellectual. And together, they what do they do? <clears throat> Provide us. Yeah. yeah. So then, this becomes our compass. This becomes our, our compass in life what to do and what to not to do, what to avoid, and what to follow. So we are good, right? It's clear. So you're not going to be one of those who got shot because they were seeking thrill and fun in life. All right? Sure. So I'll let go. Like